Today we will start a fourth module quantum mechanics or wave mechanics. So in the last chapter we have studied the Bohr theory. So this theory is able to account for many aspects of atomic phenomena. It can explain the uh, stability of the atom and also the presence of spectral lines and the presence of discrete energy levels in the atoms but it has got uh, a number of limitations also so first of all we will discuss the limitations of Bohr model so the first limitation is that it applies to one electron atoms and ions so the one electron atom is hydrogen so the Bohr theory is applicable only for one electron species, one hydrogen and uh, one electron ions like helium plus and lithium 2 plus. So we know that there are two electrons in helium. So ionizing this, we will, that means uh, if we remove one of the electron, we will get a singly ionized helium so which has only one electron and doubly ionized lithium the lithium is one electron and the other two electrons we will remove so in one electron species in the Bohr theory applicable this Bohr theory does not even work for ordinary helium the ionized the helium atom volume helium atom electrons and the volume Bohr theory apply so the first limitation of Bohr model is that it is applicable to one electron species such as hydrogen singly ionized helium doubly ionized lithium etc and the second limitation is that this theory cannot explain why certain spectral lines are more intense than others. That is, we have spectrum observing mercury, hydrogen spectrum observing. We have seen that all lines in the intensity of all lines are more bright than all the dull lines. So, Bohr theory cannot explain the reason for this. That is, in Lines in the intensity different avan la karinam and the corresponding probability of transition different ay don't that is the probability transition probability could could yeah case la namka intense cycle lines gone but level in the very level like transition probability could the lang and the corresponding aitla uh spectral line in the intensity code the larkim a transition probability core of one angle and the corresponding angle spectral line in the intensity core of a larkim so uh, that means the Bohr theory cannot explain why certain transitions are more probable than others so certain transitions between the energy levels have greater probabilities of occurrence so, Intensity of the spectral lines. That is the probability of transition in the Bohr theory which it explains here by detail. So that is the second limitation of Bohr model. So now third one is that the Bohr model cannot explain the fine structure. That means it cannot account for the observation that many spectral lines actually consist of several separate lines whose wavelength differ slightly. But cell lines, spectrometer which is cell lines, they are actually two or more lines having very small difference in wavelength. I have to but we fine structure in the So it cannot explain the fine structure. And the fourth limitation is that the Bohr theory cannot explain how individual atoms interact with one another to form macroscopic aggregates of matter with uh, different 
physical and chemical properties. The atoms interact with the atom. Atoms are oxygen property and ozone. The number is the same. The particles interact with the materials. Matter down with a different and uh, different uh, physical and chemical properties. So this phenomena cannot be explained with the help of Bohr model. But if successful theory of atom and the varying of the phenomena, that is, in any atoms interact with the different uh, materials and down the with different physical and chemical properties and explains the pattern, but. Uh, Bohr theory could not explain this also. So these are the four limitations of Bohr model. So in order to overcome those limitations, an approach was developed in the year 1925 and 1926 by the scientists Schrodinger, Heisenberg, Max Born, Dirac, etc. under the name quantum mechanics. The limitations overcome the other branch of quantum mechanics. So, the application of quantum mechanics to problems involving nuclei, atoms, molecules and matter in solid state made it possible to understand a vast body of data. That is the quantum mechanics, the nucleus, all atoms, molecules, matter like apply the po theoretical results and the corresponding experimental results match in the predictions quantum mechanics in the predictions are accurate the experiment right coincide in the so quantum mechanics has surveyed every experimental test thus far all experiment in very fine that either quantum mechanical predictions are in agreement with the experiments done. So, quantum mechanics is the successful theory of the atom. But in the limitations, both theory the limitations overcome and quantum mechanics in party. So, it is in agreement with the experimental observations. So, we know that uh, Classical mechanics is uh, true for the macroscopic world. Classical mechanics are Newtonian mechanics is true for the macroscopic world. So now, uh, in classical mechanics, we can predict the future history of a particle completely. So the, this history is determined by the initial position and momentum along with the forces acting upon the particle. For them, Karim Newton's uh, law switch it. Uh, equations of motion equation. Namka initial position momentum. Arya Mingila. Namka then the final position. Parayam batu. Momentum parayam batu. Adhubal then uh, force acting for other than such a Acceleration and now we will predict the position and moment. So, if we know the force acting on the particle and the initial position and momentum, we can exactly predict the future position and momentum. And we know that this is true for the macroscopic world. But in the case of quantum mechanics, the certainty is not there. The classical mechanics will not certain it. So, future history is not certain to predict it. But in the case of quantum mechanics, the certainty is not there. Because the initial state of the particle cannot be established with sufficient accuracy. We cannot even determine the initial position and momentum with 100% accuracy. So, there is a limitation imposed by uncertainty principle.
in the microscopic world. So the uncertainty principle is there in the macroscopic world also, but we can neglect it uh, because uh, in the macroscopic world, cross H is very, very small and we can neglect it. So, quantum mechanics initial position and initial momentum is accurate. That is uncertainty. But the future position and future momentum is uncertain. So, we have chapter 2 and delta x0. The uncertainty at the initial time, if it is small, then the uncertainty at the later time is very, very large. But so, the future history is accurate to predict and quantum mechanics in the case. So, uh, in quantum mechanics, we have probabilities rather than certainties. For example, we uh, have radius of the uh, ground state of hydrogen atom is given by Bohr radius according to Bohr model. It is 5.29 into 10 raised to minus 11 meters. This is a fixed value. On. Bohr theory is a fixed value. On. But in quantum mechanics, it is the most probable radius. But we Bohr theory is not exactly quantum mechanical theory. It is a semi-classical theory. Half classical and half quantum mechanical theory. So in quantum mechanics, uh, Bohr radius is the most probable radius. So Bohr theory is exact or fixed uh, radius. But in quantum mechanics, it is the most probable radius. That means if we are if we calculate Bohr radius in the experiment, we will calculate 5.29 and 10 raised to minus 11 meters. We will calculate the value of 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 the most probable value will be 5.3 into 10 raised to minus 11. So, if an experiment is done, it may yield a different value, either larger or smaller, but the most probable value. The value most likely to be found is uh, the Bohr radius. That means the 5.3 into 10 raised to minus 11. So in Bohr model this is the most probable value. There is certain value. Then we have to say quantum mechanics and classical mechanics in that exact value. There is certainty is not a poor substitute. But Classical mechanics is just an approximation of quantum mechanics. Now, uh, classical mechanics is certain that we have to do in the macroscopic world. The macroscopic world is a matter made of uh, so many individual atoms. But we have departure, average the noticeable. That's why we are certain. Actually, classical mechanics and my values are certain. But we feel that these values are certain because uh, the matter is made of uh, many, many atoms. So, the deviation from average behavior is unnoticeable. But quantum mechanics are in the microscopic world and macroscopic world in true one. Uh, that the classical mechanics macroscopic world in a quantum mechanics microscopic world in a correct the quantum mechanics is true for both microscopic and macroscopic world. But we could under set of physical principles and actually quantum mechanics is true for both the microscopic world and the macroscopic world. And we can say that classical mechanics is an approximation of quantum mechanics. So we have seen in the correspondence principle that for large quantum numbers, quantum mechanics and classical mechanics will give the same set of results. Apo, uh, microscopic world in the principle, macroscopic world in the principle, no quantum mechanics is true for both the microscopic and the macroscopic world. But one day, we have macroscopic and quantum mechanics apply. Classical mechanics apply, quantum mechanics apply, macroscopic and we have the same result. Okay.